Yes, we record these and show them um, on Sunday at 10 and noon on the internal channels. So, well, now we'll try this over again and I'll help the sheep get back on their way. They're kind of spindly legs. Yes. Well, let's, let us begin with our opening hymn, which is on Jordan's Bank. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we glory thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us who know you now by faith to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. 
Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice. Because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, the wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Epoch. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join with me in saying together that portion of Psalm 72. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people, and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and the moon endure from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall pay tribute, and the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him, and all nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress, and the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and dear shall their blood be in his sight. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it had been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is a sh to shepherd my people Israel, then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring word to me when they, where they, had, when they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream, in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> 
Today's gospel spells out for us the why of Christmas. Christmas Day gives us the familiar, family-friendly stories with a little drama, no room in the inn. But not much more than you would find in a Disney PG movie. Enough to make it interesting, but not enough to frighten us or make us think twice. But today, the gospel for Epiphany, if we pay attention, is filled with too much that is ripped from the headlines. A family on the run for their lives, seeking shelter in a foreign land, becoming refugees. It is a gospel that spells out the why of Christmas. Why God had to come to earth and show us a new way to live. Not gentle Jesus lying in a manger, but ruthless Herod out for blood. And while this may not be the Christmas story we want, it is one that resonates with us today. Author Kathleen Norris put it this way, Herod is a guy we know, a coward who appears secure in his status and power, but is desperately afraid of losing it. We know what's coming, the slaughter of infant, infants in Bethlehem, the beheading of John the Baptist, and all because a man fears losing his position and facing social shame. The Magi read a man better than most, and their, dis and their discernment, they recognize that something is not right with Herod, despite his words of encouragement. So it was then, so it is now. Families on the run, people duped by low lies told by all sorts of powers, corporate and political, and often, most painfully, the lies we tell ourselves. If any one of you has gone to therapy, you may know a thing or two about epiphanies. They sound so lovely. A bright light makes the path clear that shows a better, holier, more divine way of living. A bright light that shows us that we are bright lights worthy of God's love. But with epiphanies comes something much harder, change. The call to change, to turn, to actually follow that light. And as much as turning is a good thing, turning towards the light, there is also the turning away from the renunciation of that which is not healthy or holy. For me in my life right now, the call to turn away from is turning away from the need to control everything. Did you know that I did control everything? But now I'm not going to do that anymore. I can be a control freak, and that urge for me comes from a dark place that blocks the divine light. For you, it could be completely different. Maybe it is learning to put boundaries in a relationship. When an epiphany reminds us of the light inside of us, we need to stand up and so not to those things or people that attempt to shut out the light. Stand up to those things that attempt to shut out the light. And that does not come without grief and loss. But the good news, the good news is that as it was then, it is now. Jesus comes. Jesus comes to be with us when we need to make difficult choices in our life. Jesus comes and will be our constant companion on the journey. The why of Christmas brought out in Matthew's story is political and global, as demonstrated by Herod then and the Herods now, but it is also deeply personal. T.S. Eliot captured the challenge inherent in Epiphanies in his poem, The Journey of the Magi. He wrote this poem after becoming a Christian and joining the Anglican Church. Witnessing this miraculous birth being blinded by the light also brings about death to the way we have always done things, death to our being in charge. T.S. Eliot, The Journey of the Magi, a cold coming we had of it, just the worst time of year for a journey, and such a long journey. The way is deep and the weather sharp, the very dead of winter, and the camels galled, sore-footed, refractory, lying down in the melting snow. There were times we regretted the summer palaces on slopes, the terraces, and the silken girls bringing sherbet. Then the camel men cursing and grumbling and running away and wanting their liquor and women. 
and the night fires going out and the lack of shelters and the cities hostiles, hostile and the towns unfriendly and the villages dirty and charging high prices. A hard time we have of it. At the end, we preferred to travel at night, sleeping in snatches, with the voices singing in our ears, saying that this was all folly. Then at dawn, we came down to a temperate valley, wet below the snow line, smelling of vegetation. With a running stream and a water mill beating the darkness, and three trees on the low sky, and an old white horse galloped away in the meadow. Then we came to a tavern with vine leaves over the lintel. Six hands had an open door dicing for pieces of silver, and feet kicking the empty wineskins. But there was no information, and so we continued. And arriving at evening, not a moment too soon, finding the place it was, you might say, satisfactory. All this was a long time ago, and I would do it again, but set down, this set down, this, where we are all led that way, towards birth or death. There was a birth, certainly. We had evidence, and no doubt. I had seen birth and death, but I had thought they were different. This birth was hard and bitter agony for us. Like death, our death, we return to our places, these kingdoms, but no longer at ease here, in the old dispensation with an alien people clutching their gods. I should be glad of another death. Do you not know that it is your light that lights the world? May it be so. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us give thanks to God, our Mother and Father, for all the gifts so freely given to us for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea, Lord, we thank you. For all that is gracious in the lives of women and men that reveals the image of Christ to us, Lord, we thank you. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families and friends, the staff and volunteers here at Episcopal Homes, Lord, we thank you for minds to think and remember, hearts to love, and ways to be kind to one another, Lord, we thank you. For strength and courage to accept growing weakness and patience in suffering, Lord, we thank you. For all whose lives are closely linked with ours. For those in any need or trouble, 
communion of saints in all times and places. For all the departed we have loved. Lord, we thank you. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer a sign of peace to one another. So happy Epiphany, everyone! Um, I want to remind folks that we have a we have a new prayer book here, which is a, a place for us to enter any prayers that we have, and we will always remember them as we come to the altar. Um, today, I will be adding a prayer for Sue Vanelli, who was a weekend receptionist at, um, at on the Welcome Center, who died last Friday very unexpectedly. She was 74 years old and working here, and um, we don't know exactly what happened, but I'll be adding her. And I invite you to add any prayers that you might think of, and you can always come up here at any time during the day and um, add your prayers. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us. be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts 
to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food of drink, a new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our brother Jesus has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia! the gifts of God for the people of God, holy food for holy people.
body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting love. Amen. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the one who creates and restores everything that is, the one who is Mary's child and the child of God, the one who is the Holy Spirit ever present, may this holy three in one bring you compassion and peace and bless your lives with joy. Amen. 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 peace to love and serve our Lord and to be the light. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen.